Hey everyone, welcome back to my low content publishing design tutorial series. My name's Rachel Harrison Sund. So today I'm going to show you how you can customize your PDF templates in Affinity Publisher. Now, quite a few of you purchase pre-made templates to kind of speed up your publishing process. And when you do that, it's always a good idea to customize them if possible, just so you can differentiate your book from everyone else who's also using the exact same interior templates. So this can be a little bit of a challenge sometime, depending on what programs you have and you know how you're receiving those templates. If you've just simply got a PDF template that you need to do some edits to, you can actually use Affinity Publisher to do some of those edits. So I'm gonna flip the screen now and I'm going to show you how you can open up those PDFs in Affinity Publisher and make some of those changes that you'd like to make in order to customize your PDFs. And I'm gonna show you how to overcome a few of the challenges that will probably pop up as you're doing so. So let's just flip the screen and dive right in. All right, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is locate the template that you would like to make some edits to. I'm just going to right click on the file. I'm gonna hit open with, and I'm going to scroll down to Affinity Publisher. That is going to open up my template in Affinity Publisher. Now you're gonna get this pop-up box here. Make sure you've set your DPI to 300 and color space, you can choose CMYK. And I like to just tick both of these boxes here that will give you the greatest amount of um, editing capabilities. So then I'll hit open. Okay, now one small caveat here, if your interior template has a bleed, what you're going to have to do is you're just going to open up Infinity Publisher, you're going to create a new document to the correct specifications of your file size, and then that's going to account for the bleed when you open it. Um, if you were to open up a PDF the way that I just showed you, and there was a bleed attached to that PDF, Affinity Publisher is going to create the document at the size that is including the bleed, which you don't want. So if there's no bleed, open it up the way I've just showed you. If there is a bleed, then create a new document, create that document at the trim size of your document and then import your PDF. Most of your purchase templates are not going to have a bleed, so that won't even be an issue. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to File, Document Setup, and I'm going to click the facing pages. That's just going to give me a better view of the design as the pages relate to one another. And I will hit OK. All right, now we can see our facing pages. Now, as you can see, Publisher has created text boxes around all of this text, and that means we can go in and make some edits. Now, a thing to note here, if you don't have the specific fonts that the PDF was created with, your computer is just going to fill it in with another font. So you really wanna keep that in mind and be judicious with what you're going to start editing. So I do obviously have this same font because I created this template myself. So I could just change this to contact info maybe. but you can see I've lost some of the formatting here. So it's easy enough to fix. This is the tracking. And if you don't recall, tracking is the amount of space between the letters of a word or a line of text. So I can either adjust that by heading over to my paragraph here, or my character rather. And that's this little button here, the tracking. So I can either do it this way, or I can do a shortcut. I'm just gonna hit option and my space bar. So there you go, that is the first edit that I've made to my template. So you can also just use this selection tool here and you can just move that around any way you see fit. Um, you know, if you wanted to put this up more to the top or adjust that, you could feel free to do that. I'm just gonna leave that as is, and then I'll move on to the body of my book. Now, some templates that you buy might not have this copyright page right here, so you might just wanna have to add that in. So let's just pretend that this page isn't here for a moment. What we can do is go back to this first page here, and I'll just click the Add Page button. 
So I want to add one page after the first page. And I'll just click that. All right, and now I've got this blank page here. Now, I've, obviously my template already had one of those, so that's just been moved over. But if this template hadn't had one, this would, um, it would just display this, this first page in the weekly planner. So that's one way that you can just quickly add your own copyright page. We already had one, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. And what you can do instead, if your template does have one of these, is you can just place your own copyright information. So again, you can just go up to File, Place, and then you can choose your logo and plop that in right there. And then you can just drag out a text box here. Um, I've already got one, but I can just click on this text box and I can start just start um, typing. And then obviously you can just choose whichever font you want from up here. So again, I already had that, so I'm just gonna get rid of this. All right, now let's head down to this first spread and we'll come back to this page in just a minute. And we'll just go directly down here first. So the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna create a master page here. So I'm going to go up to the master page and I'll just click add master. We'll just, we can just leave it as master A or you can change the name to whatever you want. Make sure it's on facing pages and we'll just leave it on the set dimensions of the page and we'll leave it at print and portrait and we'll just click OK. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the spread that I'd like to change and I'm going to select everything on the spread and I'll hit Control C, I'll hit Command C I believe it's gonna be Alt-C on a PC. And then I'll go up to Master. And again, either Command-V or Alt-V to paste it on there. Now that one image didn't follow us up here, but that's okay because we're going to delete that image anyways. So in my new planner, I don't want this type of style. So I'll just get rid of that entirely. And then I'll start with my header up here. So. You'll notice that some things are gonna be a little bit awkward, like for example, this text box, there's not really any reason for it to be all the way down here. That's okay, we'll just shorten it and we'll make the changes that we wanna make. So for this example, I wanna do something a little bit more traditional. So I'm gonna choose a more traditional font. So let's just choose the good old standby, of Garamond Semibold. And we'll keep the size as is for now. And maybe we want to change the text color a little bit. It's at 60% black right now, so maybe we wanna bump that up to 80. All right, so that is done. And we can change the subheadings too. So we'll try Garamond Medium for that. Now you'll notice here, we've got this weird thing going on where it's grouped all of these into one text box. And the reason it's done that is because if you recall from a previous video, the one where we actually created this planner, this was created in a table. So this text was actually within a table. So when you're opening up PDFs in this program, it's not going to be perfect. There are gonna be a couple of weird formatting things here and there, but it's all pretty easy to fix. Um, it's just something to kind of uh, be aware of. So this is all in one text box. So I'm just gonna select it all, make my change, and I'm gonna be good to go. All right, same with this. All right, so you can see already, it's it's a slightly different look and feel here. It's, it's nothing too, too drastic, but you get the point. You can bring in these templates and just 
do a few little tweaks and you're gonna get something with a little bit of a different look and feel. So we're not quite done yet. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of everything on this page. All right, so one thing I didn't do at the beginning of this was to set up my margins, which I obviously need now so that I can move over this left page to the right and know exactly where we are. So we'll go to View, Guides Manager. Okay, now I can see here that the margins are actually in points, which we don't want. We want that in inches. So let's close out of that for a sec. We'll go to File, Document Setup, and we'll just make sure that our document units are in inches. So we'll click OK, we'll go back to the Guides Manager, and now we should be able to add in our margins, which I believe are at 0.5 inches. All right, our interior one's a little bit bigger. We're not gonna worry about that right now because we're not actually making any adjustments there. So we'll hit Close, and I'll make sure that all of this is selected. And now I'm going to hit the Option key, as I drag this text box over, and that's copied it, and I'll just line that up with my outer margin. Okay, so now we've got our spread. Now, if you want to make some other stylistic changes, you can go ahead. So maybe we just want to add um, something decorative, something you know, mildly decorative at the top. So I'll just create a straight line here. And let's see. Let's widen that up maybe to like 24 points or something like that. And maybe we'll make that we'll just make that a shade of gray maybe like 60 or something. Now one thing we want to do here is we want to zoom in and just make sure because this is actually creating a bleed here. So I'm going to zoom right into that. All right, now I don't have a bleed set up here because remember when I imported the document, it didn't actually have a bleed. So if I want to add any elements that bleed off, I'm going to go back up to File, Document Setup, and I'll click over to bleed. And remember, our bleed is always going to be 0 0.125 inches. And if this little chain is activated here, once you hit tab, it's going to populate all of these boxes so you don't have to do it four times. And click OK. And now we've got our bleed. So that line is looking a little bit crazy. So let's just fix that. So let's go into stroke. And I want to fix the cap on that. And I want to make sure this goes right to the edge of the bleed, which it does. So this faint line here, that's our bleed. So it's not lining up perfectly, but it's hanging over the edge. So that's fine. I'm not worried about that. And Let's click out of preview mode. And again, if you're on a Mac, the shortcut is Control W. I'm not entirely sure what it is on a PC, but you can also access it by going to view preview mode. All right, so I might just copy this line and then make it a lot smaller. So I'm just using this as a really basic design element for the top here. And of course, if you wanted to, you could move around any of these boxes. You could add a quote somewhere if you wanted to. All of this stuff is completely editable. Um, you know, I could grab this box and everything else inside it and move it around. So as you can see, you can do a lot of different edits here. And pretty much edit all of the elements on the page. 
So now we've created this first spread and that's great, but you've got, I don't know, like a hundred pages in here. Obviously you do not want to have to repeat this on every page. That's why we did this on a master page. So everything we've done on this master page will now update all of the other pages for us. So we don't have to go through each page separately, but of course, before that can happen, we've actually got to get rid of all of the other pages and then apply this master to the rest of the pages. So as you can see, as I scroll down here, I've still got the old weekly planner style showing up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of the pages. So I'll just click on that first one there and the last one. And I'll just right click on that and delete 51 pages. And I'm going to delete this as well. And now I'm going to add those 51 pages back that I just deleted. So I'll click on add pages. I'll put 51 and I'll insert that after page three. Now they're all blank. So I'm going to go back up to master. I'll right click on that, apply master pages. And I will put specified pages and we'll start that on page three. And what did we say? 51. All right. So now we have got all of our pages here. And like I said, you can just move any of these elements around, edit them however you want, add quotes. So next week I'll be showing you how to use textiles in Affinity Publisher, and that's going to allow you to take what you've just done now and create multiple versions of these templates. So it's just going to streamline your entire process. So if you're happy with what you've got here, just, you know, take a quick scroll and whatever changes you've made, just make sure that there's no formatting issues that are standing out. So then you'll go to file export. You know, this is giving me an overflowing text warning, but I'm not going to worry about that. I can see that everything looks fine. So I'm going to ignore and continue. I'm going to hit PDF, make sure it's at 300 DPI PDF for print. Make sure you're not for web or anything like that for print and all spreads. And then you can just export and you are done. So there you have it. I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button along with that bell so that you can get notified every time I release one of these videos. If you want some more low content publishing tips, then just head on over to my blog at rachelharrisonsund.com. And if you haven't downloaded my guide, three steps to publishing your first low content book in less than a day, you can do so by clicking on the link in my bio. Thanks guys. Have a great day.